Okay. I now have the grid connected to the primary of the bit transformer. The AC 120 volts, 60 hertz, is connected to the primary of the bit transformer shown here. And the secondaries are in series. The secondaries output goes right into the rotoverter motor here. L1 and L2 connect to L1 and L2 up here. L, the 5UF run cap goes across L2 and L3. It's your basic rotoverter three phase AC motor. Uh, way to hook single phase to it and you have that run cap so I have a 5 UF run cap across L2 and L3 okay so that's what I'm doing now the experiment is running a rotor verter motor from a bit transformer before I ran a rotor verter motor from the grid and then connected a bit transformer to it in the run cap phase and right here on L3 I hooked the bit transformer in series right here and that was the last video I did I think and I got a 180 degree phase shift with 110 ohm resistive load across the secondaries of the bit but now I'm doing it backwards and I'm going to run the rotoverter motor from the bit so that's what I'm doing now and uh, I want to say where I'm measuring the amps from I'm measuring it on the hot lead. Okay, this is your typical North American 120 volt AC prong. This one, the straight one, this is the hot. This is the neutral, they call it. Hot neutral. And I was testing this RV motor here and when I looked at amps input to it with a meter, it said 450 milliamps, quite a bit. This one has kind of gummy bearings, and it's bigger. This one only said 30 milliamps, the one inside this blue bin and uh, but anyways that's what it said with a meter 450 milliamps but when I measured it with the scope on the neutral you know the scope on this neutral wire here you know it said 280 milliamps amperage going into this motor and then when I measured it the scope on the hot lead coming in from the grid it said 830 milliamps of the amperage so you can see why I don't trust meters and now, you know, the scope says either 280 or 830. Now, I assume this is like the 830 is what it really is. Maybe. Maybe it's really 280 and the 830 is because I'm using a bit transformer and the amperage is... 
pumped up to 830 by these shunt bars and all that going on. Maybe. I don't know. So, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm, I'm measuring right now from the hot lead the one that will show the most amperage on a scope. And what's weird is the meter said 450 milliamps on this one, and then I put the meter on this one, and it said a 450 milliamps. The meter did. So, can't trust a meter, really. So, now the scope shows the phase shift, so let's look at the scope. Try to go a little faster. Here's the amperage of the scope. I'm in 0 .01, 0 .01 square divisions. Each of those squares is 0 0.01 volts. Here's the volts. It's in 10 volts square division and the probe, the probe is on times 10. And here's both of them, which is the interesting part. And look how small those little power triangles, I call them, are. This is a 165 degree phase shift, not quite 180. At least that's what I measure. And if you freeze this on your computer screen, you'll see it's 12 spaces. Let me try to get it up and down balanced here. Anyways, it's 12 spaces counting between the volts and the amps. And it's 26 spaces for a AC cycle of 360 degrees. So, you know, you count from here to here, 26 spaces. Okay, so you do the math. And 360 degrees divided by 26 comes to 13.8 degrees. And since there's 12 spaces, you times 13.8 times 12, and you get 165 degree phase shift. And then you get on Google, what is cosine for 165 degrees? And there it is, 0.9659. So that's the power factor, 0.96. Now when I measured this peak to peak, when I measured this, let's say the, uh, here's the amperage. It's like 17 and a half. I'll bring that up there. It's about 17 and a half spaces. Each of these is 5, 5, 10, 15, and then about 2 and a half. So I have it at 17.5 peak to peak spaces, okay? We're in the point oh one. So that means each of those each of those is worth 0 0.002 volts. So, here's the math. 0 0.01 volts, square divisions on the scope. 0 0.01 divided by 5 is 0 0.002. That's what I was just saying. 17 and a half spaces peak to peak. Times 0 0.02 is 0 0.035 divided by 2, because this is peak to peak. You only want what's above the zero line to give you AC, and it's 0 0.0175. 0 0.0175 
0.017 times times 0.707 gives you RMS and that comes to 0 0.0123 volts RMS and then you divide that by the current shunt which is a 0.1 resistor and you have the amperage 0.123 amps just happens to be 123 volts going in times a 0.123 amps gives you 15.1 va volts amps not watts to get the watts you times it by the power factor and the power factor is a negative number because it's over 90 degrees so 15.1 times negative 0.96 negative 14.5 watts. That means it's returning 14.5 watts to the source. So that's what it is running this rotoverter motor. Now because we're in the negative negative land over 90 degrees it seems like the more amps you have circulating the higher the VA number the more watts is being returned to the source and this is kind of a mysterious thing because how do you know it's being returned to the source how do how it's, it's, the power's pouring in from the grid, you know, and it's going backwards. And so this is what uh, we need to figure out is how to take advantage of that. To me, it's like a uh, a generator being spun, and there's no lens law happening. Because there's no power being made. So, and uh, so it's kind of the same with this power factor thing in the negative, the negative numbers for the power factor. It's like only that amount of power that you see in those triangles is actual power. And they're very small. So if this was a generator spinning, you would only get lens law during these overlap periods. One thing I'd like to do is, someday, is make a generator that only pops out a little bit of uh, power right here, here, and here. Maybe some capacitive discharge thing that, that mimics where the power triangles are here. So you'd have a generator with extremely low draw. Also, also, uh, what would be a fun project is have this bit transformer be an inverter pump alternating DC low voltage, say 12 volts or 24 volts, into the primary. You can even have the primary split into a bifiler. Have it low impedance and uh, pump power in one way, pump power in the other way. And then have these windings so it kicks up voltage to like 120 volts or 230 volts. So you have a 
bit inverter. Wouldn't that be cool? I bet you it would be very, uh, very efficient. You can go the other way too. Uh, have 120 volts coming in here, let's say, to the primary, and then have the secondaries be very low impedance winds, so you, you step down the voltage, and step it down to like 12 or 15 volts, rectify it, and put it into the battery running an inverter another way to go with these. It'd be fun to have like 10 or 12 of these of all different uh, winding configurations. So right now I only have two working on three. So and I don't have my first one here anymore. That's another story. So, anyway, okay, I won't talk so much. Okay, I have experimented, done the experiment of running a rotoverter with a bit transformer, and it works. And there's a 165-degree phase shift with it. Okay, so I guess that's the video for the day. Okay, thanks for watching.